marketing, um, corpo, uh, capital, capital, without actually contributing, contributing. I always hate it when my brain just like, I'm in mid-sentence and it's like, click, turn off. Hey all y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a video that I suppose could be classified as whiny. It is very much opinion based. So before any of y'all start whatever in and all that jazz, we all have different opinions, different stances, different whatever. That's what makes the world go round. So no need to get all butt hurt. This is all just opinions. I love having having conversations with y'all, all y'all that have different opinions, the same, it's, it's great, it's good, it's healthy. But today we are going to be talking about products that I suppose rub me the wrong way. And we're going to be talking about some particular products as well as some sort of overarching themes and products and whatevers that brands do that just, I suppose, get on my nerves. I got my list thingy going on here like I do, so let's just roll and do it. Okay, we are going to start off with a brand, and I know I said we're going to be talking about products, but got to talk about this because this definitely rubs me the wrong way. And that is Tom now, I know several of y'all have told me that you love his products. They're a great quality. They're worth the price. Everything like that. That's great. That's wonderful. But I kind of don't really care. Even if your product is the most amazing and all be all the, the most phenomenal thing ever. When you, as a brand owner, literally come out and say, I price my products that high so that a particular demographic cannot purchase them, I have issue with that. I mean, I kind of object to just, you know, fashion houses, you know, Chanel, Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, all ones like that, you know, taking their, like, fashion, which is created for the 1% people in the world anyway and then bringing that over into makeup you know i have issues with that in and of a whole but when when, when you literally when you're standing there and you're literally like mm, well i price my products so high so poor people can't buy them that kind of makes you a jerk and I understand, Mr. Ford, you are a million, billion, whatever heir, and you don't care at all, but for me and my house, I'm just, I just, that's just really, really, when you are literally, you know, not potentially non-inclusive, but when you literally come out and make a statement that you're being purposefully non-inclusive, I just, I can't, I cannot jive with that. Okay, the next product that I guess, I hate using the word offended because I don't offend easily. It's more just like it's something happens and it gets released and you just kind of sit there like this. That kind of reaction. And that would have to be the Too Faced, the, well, it came out in the Pretty Mess collection, which was a collaboration with some kind of housewife of something something. But in particular, that body powder, shimmer, whatever, that was ever so cleverly named Pat the Puss. Now, I feel like this wouldn't necessarily have been a big thing if it had been done by like, Urban Decay or even NARS, though NARS tends to be a little bit classier with its sexual innuendos. But when you have Too Faced, that's all like, ooh, look, adorable clover Jared's dog face highlighter. And then on the other hand, they're all like, Pat the Puss and DSL. It's like, can you, can you make a decision or is your like manager, your creative team run by two very different people who are vying for dominance over the aesthetic of Too Faced? And I feel like when it comes to, you know, naming things and being all whatever, you know, NARS did the orgasm blush and they do that whole thing, you know, all right, you can be, you can be a little bit clever, you can be whatever. 
But when you, you know, bypass clever and you bypass innuendo and you go straight into like crass and just, just not cute and you're just like, eh, it just, it, it loses its effect and its appeal. And so I'm not necessarily easily offended as it were, but it's just, it's just something that I'm like, really did did we have to go there and i understand when i did my whole makeup talking about the sexualization of makeup some of y'all were like well don't you know don't treat children by children they're gonna do whatever they're gonna you know and also you know well they're not gonna be in there buying makeup that may be true but there are those who do buy makeup. How many videos on YouTube do we have? Makeup collection of a 14 year old, makeup collection of a 16 year old, makeup collection of a 12 year old. You know, we got young boys going out and they doing their makeup and they doing the blow up thing. Even if it's a small demographic, it is still a demographic. And in that sense, I mean, come on Two Faced, are you cutesy bunny bun buns or are you edgy? And then we might as well get the Too Faced, the last Too Faced product out of the way. The Glow Job Face Mask? I mean, just the whole, like, name of it all and the innuendo and everything aside and the whole, like, just, just, just pick an aesthetic already. That aside, what I really take object to is them marketing me a face mask, a skincare thing, that's that I feel like the marketing and the appeal and the pull of this product was the fact that it was literally filled with glitter. I mean, can you not? There are no skin benefits to glitter. In fact, glitter can be very abrasive on the face, let alone what it's gonna do if it gets in your eyes. And one thing that frustrates me about this product in particular is I feel like sometimes I've had a couple people in videos where I'm talking about certain things, they're like, well, I think you're missing the point here. You know, makeup is marketed toward, you know, the everyday person who's gonna be you know, repurchasing things. People who aren't makeup collectors like, say, you and I. But I honestly feel like they aren't. Or at least there are certain products that are very much not advertised to the everyday person like this. Because what do they want to happen with this? They want Instagrammers and Snapchatters and YouTubers to make super clickbaity thumbnails where they're all like, ooh, or they do the I mean, you, y'all you, you seen them all. You know, that's what they're like marketing it for, for, for the clickbaity and the whatever. You know, and maybe I, maybe I am offended by skincare that isn't necessarily marketed for you and I who have normal, unfillered, unmicroderma peeled, whatever, to get actual real good skincare benefits and it's marketed as just this super gimmicky and yet still expensive for people to do all like woo on whatever for and then to show their skin results with a super crazy filter on it's like well that's not gonna happen to me yes i am a little offended by that and then that does just straight on go into glam glow and now glam glow is not cruelty free so i can't buy from them anyway i have tried one product by them was not a fan but when you are literally basing so many products not necessarily i mean well well you're telling us that it's got skincare whatever but you're not necessarily basing it on like skincare benefits alone you're basing it you know oh look it's holographic or oh look it's got glitter oh look it's a collab with freaking Sonic the Hedgehog or My Little Pony. I mean, it's just like, just, just give us skincare. I feel like when it comes to skincare, that's one of those things where it's like, just give it to me cut and dried. I want it in a simple, give it to me in a tub, just a plain label on there, no glitter, no shimmer, no nothing. I do appreciate the fact that Too Faced is coming out with the like more regular skincare line. I mean, it be, it be, it better 
not have no glitter in it. Okay, then another thing that I do have issues with, this is a particular collection. This is from Urban Decay. It was released, I wanna say, or maybe three years ago all the makeup kind of blurs into one thing but the collection that they they didn't do with him but it was the Jean-Michel Basquiat collection now this was literally taking a very iconic artist of colors work and slapping it on their packaging and then shilling it to people while not even having models of color used in the advertising and the promos of the art, of the product. So you have that, that I have issues with on its own. But then you have the whole literally, okay, when you are a brand, that cannot be 100% inclusive. And I know it's saying it's very difficult to be 100% inclusive, but when, when you can't do that, but you can and do market off of a person of color's artistic contribution, I'm just like, can we not? Like, what, what, what white person signed off on that and said, this is such a great idea. And although I watched it, I remember when it happened, a lot of people, it was in a lot of people's anti-hauls. It then went on sale. Surprise, surprise. And some people commented on, well, you know, Basquiat would probably, <laughs> probably find it a little bit humorous and get in on the whole, the fact that his, his art is being used in like a marketing um corpo capital capital capitalistic and consumeristic way he would you know he would kind of kind of find that pretty great but when you're using art for for literally the sake of shilling product and trying to be cool and cute and edgy and ooh, look at us using this like a really unique and cool art from back in the day without actually contributing 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 to you know underprivileged youth or art programs or you know drug rehabilitation programs when you're literally slapping it on there you're just like all right you're good go sell go make me money it kind of in my opinion takes away from the importance and the significance of the art and art on a whole. All right, and another item that's kind of like, we're gonna talk about, okay, let me just, I'll just put it out. The Tarte Shape Tape Foundation, not their, not their face tape or anything else that they've tried to come out and attempt to kind of come back from that. But the initial, you know, ooh, we're taking our concealer and we're turning it into a fancy, fancy foundation. I understand that not every brand can be super super inclusive but that being said that being said you'd think there could at least be more of an effort like you're making a foundation and and let alone the fact that you literally took a foundation of yours that wasn't selling very well didn't have the best reviews and you're slapping it in new packaging with a new fancy trigger whatever name that aside when you come out with this shade range that's literally just like deeper melanin who? In a world where we are much more inclusive. America is a super multifaceted, multicultural, all different kind of people, colors, shapes, sizes, whatevers. You would think that it would behoove you to actually try to make a shade range that made the whole internet give your brand the side eye. And I understand, I understand, after Fenty released their like whole big giant every undertone, every shade for every single everybody and everyone was like, oh, it's the best foundation range that ever existed. And in a whole, against all the other, you know, shade ranges, yeah, that's great, it's wonderful. But I also do take object to the fact that since that launch any brand that comes out with a foundation range that isn't exactly that they literally become crucified and it's all like well well they can't come up with a range that's as good as 
empty, so they're not inclusive. Inclusivity is super, super important, but we need to calm down. We need to expect more, but also calm down a little bit because sometimes I feel like just because something isn't exactly perfect, we lose our minds. Okay, then another thing, this is definitely a much more overarching theme, and that is one trick pony makeup. And I mean makeup products that the companies tend to ride off the notoriety of. Examples are Too Faced Chocolate Bar, Urban Decay Naked Bars, the Too Faced Peach Thing, NARS Orgasm, um, Tarte Shape Tape, or the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, you know, where they got this thing that was really popular and really well received, and they're like, okay, okay, let us beat this pony to death. Let us take this, ride it off into the sunset, and just keep going. And the reason I don't enjoy this is not because extension products from certain things have been bad. There have been quite a few things from the Too Faced. Um, Peach, you know, they, they made the original palette and then they came out with all, you know, there have been a bunch of things from that that I've absolutely loved. Same with, you know, chocolate, Urban Decay, Nick. You know, there, there are things that come off of the one product that have been good. But after a while, it really, like, takes away from the notoriety and from the beauty that was that product. Because you look at these things and you're like, wow. Wow, they created like something super stand out that shooketh the community. A good example of something that's really super very popular, Stasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance. That one was all kinds of things. You couldn't get a hold of it forever. They did make the subculture that was supposed to be the sister palette, but you don't see Anastasia coming out with, you know, oh, a blush color that looks, you know, that's called the modern renaissance, or a whole lipstick trios, or a whole nother modern renaissance collection. They're just like, this is good. We have it. Let's move on. Whereas Too Faced and Urban Decay and Tarte and other brands are like desperately clinging on to the concepts that they've had for years, being like, oh, we can't let go. And while these concept concepts have created some very solid products, sometimes it's time to move on, to grow and develop. They've had their time, thank you very much. But maybe do something a little bit different. All right, I know I did not talk about a lot of like single products and I know this video is going on pretty long so I am going to cut it off there. I do apologize for not getting a lot of products or things in if my discussion was a little bit longer than I expected. But like I said in the beginning, this is just my opinions. Y'all know any of y'all who have been subscribed to me for a long time or even a short time, you know I'm not shy about my opinions and saying how I feel about, you know, these makeup companies and what they're doing because I'm a consumer. I have a right to my opinion and to express my feelings. But I'd love to hear what you all think about things that I talked about. I'd love to hear about a product that, you know, rubs you the wrong way or you don't necessarily jive with. I love hearing y'all's just, just your, your comments. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah!